may find it surprising that one of the heroes of our faith is a Canaanite prostitute. She was saved when she demonstrated faith in the God of Israel. Her status as a hero is documented in the Hall of Faith, which is, of course, Hebrews chapter 11, where she is one of only two women listed. Her status as a hero is also shown by her being listed in Matthew chapter 1, verse 5. In some respects, her story is the story of the church. The church is made up of sinners who demonstrate their faith and thereby become the bride of Christ and members of God's kingdom. Rahab was a prostitute. She practiced her trade in, in the Canaanite city of Jericho. The Canaanite people were pagans. They worshipped multiple gods, and they focused much of their attention on appeasement of the dead. God had directed the Israelites to annihilate, to completely destroy the Canaanites. That command was repeated. Leviticus 18.1, Numbers 33.50-55, Deuteronomy 20, 13 through 18, and so forth. How then did Rahab become a hero of the faith? Let's start from the beginning. Rahab lived on the edge of town. As a prostitute, even in the pagan Canaanite culture, she was probably marginalized and not fully accepted in her own community. Her residence was built into the city wall surrounding Jericho, Therefore, she was not securely placed inside the protective wall, but rather was part of the barrier select, uh, separating the people from the outside world. Because of her trade, she was well aware of the thoughts and emotions within her community. She knew, for example, that the Canaanites' hearts melted with fear at the thought of being attacked by the Israelites. We read that in Joshua 2.9 and 5.1. God's miraculous intervention in helping the Israelites escape from the Egyptian army remained imprinted in the minds of the Canaanites, even though the parting of the Red Seas and the drowning of the pursuing Egyptian army had occurred 40 years earlier. Rahab told the Israelite, Israelite spies that she knew that the God of Israel is the God of heaven above and of earth below. Therefore, she misdirected the Canaanite king's men when they came to Rahab's door looking for the Israelites, Israelite spies. The men came here, she said, but they left at dusk. Go quickly after them, and you may catch up with them. We read that in Joshua 2, verses 4 through 5. In actuality, Rahab had hidden the men in her rooftop deck. She counseled the spies about the best way to escape. Rahab had expressed her belief in the God of the Israelites, but more importantly, she acted on those beliefs, even at her own peril. Then she asked the spies to spare her and her family from death when the Israelites invaded. Because of her recognition of the true God and because of her actions to protect God's people, agreement was reached that Rahab and her family would be saved from death when the Israelites attacked. We read that in Joshua 2, verse 14. When the time came for the attack on Jericho, Rahab gathered her family together. Joshua directed the two spies to go to Rahab's house and deliver Rahab and her family to safety as promised. Although the details are not known, Rahab was accepted into the community and converted to Judaism and actually became a citizen of the Jewish nation. She married, gave birth to Boaz, the kinsman redeemer about whom we read in the book of Ruth, and therefore was listed in the lineage of King David, and ultimately that led to the lineage of Jesus. We read that in Matthew chapter 1, verse 5. So what made the difference in Rahab's life? Why was she spared from the slaughter of the Canaanites at Jericho? Why would she be listed in places of honor in the Bible? Hebrews 11 is known as the Hall of Faith. It lists Rahab this way, quote, By faith the prostitute Rahab, because she welcomed the spies, was not killed with those who were disobedient. 
That's from Hebrews 11.31. The second chapter of James, verse 25, provides further insight. Rahab the prostitute was considered righteous for what she did. Then James adds that famous line, So faith without deeds is dead. Romans 10.9 is often quoted for the proposition that one only need to believe in Jesus in order to be saved. That passage says, If you declare with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Clearly, we cannot earn salvation. It's a free gift given to those who believe. But James elaborates on it this way. Even the demons believe uh, that there's one true God. That's from James chapter 2, verse 19. Faith by itself, if not accompanied by action, is dead. James 2, verse 17. If we truly believe that Jesus is Lord, then that will be reflected in our actions. Rahab's actions were proof of her righteousness. The story of Rahab has application to our everyday life. So reflect with me, if you will, on these questions as we explore the teachings from Rahab. Number one, Rahab acted on her faith and that was credited to her as righteousness. How are you acting on your faith? What are you doing that demonstrates that you truly believe that Jesus is Lord over all aspects of your life and is the one true way to salvation? Question number two, Joshua honored the promise of salvation made to Rahab by the spies. God honors promises of salvation that we make to those with whom we share the gospel message. Who are you speaking to about being saved by Jesus' grace? In, chapter, in question three, Rahab accepted uh, the Israelite God, forsaking the gods of her Canaanite culture. As a result, she married into Judaism and became part of the family of Christ. How are you preparing to be the bride of Christ, marrying into God's kingdom? Rahab had several strikes against her. She was an outsider, a Gentile, even a member of the enemy of God's people. She was a prostitute, not greatly respected even among her own people. By her faith actions, she became a hero. We never have too many strikes against us. The power of Jesus' saving grace will cover it all. May God provide opportunities and the strength for each of us to express our faith through actions showing our commitment to the one true God.